memories. Mac Davis was a country music legend. Not only was he an accomplished singer-songwriter, but he also had a fairly successful, albeit low-key, acting career. Some of his first songwriting credits include the Elvis Presley hits Memories, In the Ghetto, A Little Less Conversation, and Don't Cry Daddy. And from that success, he built for himself a successful solo career. Unfortunately, he passed away September 29, 2020, adding to a long list of musical marvels who we lost in this turbulent year. A list that includes Four Seasons founding member Tommy DeVito, rock guitar guru Eddie Van Halen, Devil Went Down to Georgia songster Charlie Daniels, and the one and only John Prine. In addition to the friends and family he left behind, Mac Davis departed this world gifting us with a legacy of hits and worthy accomplishments. It's only fitting we honor his life and career by taking a look back at his achievements and contributions to the world of music and film. Do you know what his first major chart-climbing country hit was? Stay tuned to find out. Celebrating Mac Davis's life. Once the news broke that Davis had passed on, a flood of solemn condolences and tributes to his life have come pouring out of the music industry by the fellow performers he touched with his musical expertise and gentle nature. Nancy Sinatra was one of many figures to have sent out a tweet expressing she was heartbroken to learn Davis had passed. Kenny Chesney issued a statement that echoed Sinatra's sentiments, while noting he had met Davis when he was just starting off in his musical journey. He added that Mac had cordially invited him into his own home and helped turn on the creative light that was within him. Mac's manager and friend of 40 years put a post up on Facebook that reiterated how much of a legend Davis really was, but additionally that he was a loving husband, family man, and a true friend, one that would be sorely missed for both his large heart and cheerful sense of humor. Davis's Early Years He was born Morris Mac Davis on January 21, 1942, in Lubbock, Texas. Although a Texan at heart, he was not. His father, T.J. Davis, was a religious man and a strict parent. Lubbock was hard on young Mac. He routinely got into fights and was the victim of bullying. He went to high school at Lubbock High School, where he graduated at 16. After high school, he found his way to Atlanta, Georgia, where he was reunited with his mother. He then joined a rock and roll band called The Zots, and they put out two singles on OEK Records. He landed a gig as a regional manager for VJ Records around this time, helping elevate R&B performers like Dee Clark and Gene Chandler into stardom. Later on, he jumped ship from VJ and began managing artists for Liberty Records. While he worked as an employee for Nancy Sinatra's label Boots Enterprises, he got the opportunity to play on many of her tracks. She then helped him get his start on stage by working him into some of the stage shows she was producing. This was around the same time he got the chance to work with Elvis Presley and B.J. Thomas, among many other superstars. After writing A Little Less Conversation for Presley, Davis became a recognized heavyweight in the music industry himself. Soon enough, he was releasing his own records, and before long, artists such as Louis Jordan, Perry Como, and Vicky Carr were covering his songs. Following his early-on success as a rock and roll musician, he made a name for himself as a country singer. His overtly sexual hit song, Baby Don't Get Hooked On Me, clinched the number one position of the Billboard Hot 100 list and even earned him a Grammy nod. But his musical achievements didn't end there. Before we talk about Mac Davis's other major contributions to the world of music, show us a little support if you haven't already by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Make sure you stick around to find out just how Davis passed away and what his last wishes were. Mac Davis's Musical Accomplishments some of Davis's biggest solo hits that highlighted his prowess as a songwriter include the chart-topping tunes One Hell of a Woman, I Believe in Music, and Stop and Smell the Roses. In 1974, he received the Academy of Country Music's Entertainer of the Year Award. In the later 70s, he made his move to Casablanca Records, a label that was known for publishing successful records by disco legend Donna Summer and rock and rollers Kiss. In 1980, he put out the novelty track It's Hard to Be Humble, which became his first song to reach country music's top 10. His track Hooked on Music in 1981 would go to number two, and I Never Made Love Till I Made Love With You in 1985 would be his last song to reach the country charts top 10. In 2000, he would be immortalized for his life in music by being inducted into Nashville's Songwriters Hall of Fame, one of the most prestigious honors for artists of his caliber. When asked about working with Elvis back in the day, he told Songwriter University back in 2017 it was one of the most exciting periods of his life. 
He went on to express he felt as if he was a bit of a late entry into the music industry, but working with artists like Presley, Bobby Goldsboro, and Kenny Rogers really helped springboard his career. Appearing on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson also helped Davis become a household name. He soon found himself to be a songwriter who was in high demand, and subsequently his life was filled with joy and a sense of accomplishment. Mac Davis did quite well for himself. Life isn't all about the pursuit of wealth, but even so, Mac Davis found financial success in his career. In addition to being a sought-after musician, he also had a decent run in film and television. His first TV appearance was on The Johnny Cash Show in 1970. He then hosted The Mac Davis Show from 1974 to 76, and later appeared on The Muppet Show in 1980 and Dolly Parton's musical Netflix offering in 2019 titled Dolly Parton's Heartstrings. Throughout the 90s and 2000s, he guest starred on a number of hit TV shows such as That 70s Show, King of the Hill, Webster, and even Johnny Bravo. He appeared in almost two dozen films as well, including The Dukes of Hazard, Hazard and Hollywood, Where the Red Fern Grows, and Beer for My Horses, just to name a few. At the time of his death, his net worth was $12 million. Not too shabby considering he was raised in virtual poverty and came from a relatively unconnected family. Mac Davis truly made a name for himself and left behind a legacy that speaks volumes about his talent and character. Makes you wonder what the driving force was behind his enduring career. Some might say it was his family. Mac's personal life. Davis always prided himself as a family man, although this didn't always come easy to him. His first marriage to Fran Cook in 1963, when Davis was just 21 years old, ended in divorce five years later. That union did produce one fruitful thing, however, his son, Joel Scott. His next marriage in 71 was with Sarah Bark. She was just 16 when she met Davis living in the same apartment building as herself. That arrangement too ended in divorce in 1976 when she left him for Glenn Campbell. Davis and Barg didn't have any children. His third and final marriage was the one that stuck. In 1980, he was introduced to a 22-year-old nurse named Lisa Gerard. The two were wed two years later and had two children together, Noah Clare and Cody Luke. The two remained together until Davis's death at 78. Mac Davis's later works and death. It had been years since Davis had seen any activity in the charts, but that didn't mean he had hung up his guitar on the wall for good. In recent times, Davis returned to form and worked as a songwriter for aspiring modern musicians. Notably, he collaborated with Swedish DJ Avicii in 2014 on his hit track, Addicted to You. Avicii, as you may already know, sadly took his own life in 2018 at the age of 28. He was also the writer of Young Girls, which Bruno Mars performed on his 2012 record, Unorthodox Jukebox. Some of his other recent and notable offerings included collabs with Keith Urban and Rivers Cuomo from Weezer. Davis had been suffering from heart disease for years. In September of 2020, he went in for surgery, but tragically, complications from the procedure led to his death. In Mac's 1974 minor hit song, Texas in My Rear View Mirror, he sang, When I die, you can bury me in Lubbock, Texas, in my jeans. It remains to be seen if his wishes will be carried out as stated. Although Mac Davis may be gone, it's certain he won't be forgotten. We send our deepest condolences to the loved ones he left behind. May his music continue to inspire the next generation of aspiring songwriters. Are you a fan of Mac Davis, or were you previously unaware of his music? Let us know in the comments section. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Tap the bell icon to turn on notifications so you can keep up with all of our latest facts-packed video offerings.